Hello, old friends. Welcome back. This is one of three of my BPSOP courses. Uh, although I should probably welcome some newcomers as well. Maybe this is your first time with me. I appreciate it very much. All of you, thank you. Hey, I teach three courses. I'll talk more about those in a moment, but let's get right into why you're here. This is the editing in Adobe Camera Raw course. Adobe Camera Raw. What is Adobe Camera Raw and why do we care? Let me give you some highlights and then we'll dig in a little bit deeper in this first lesson of four. Each week you know you'll receive a new lesson, week one through four, but also each week I'm going to give you at least five bonus videos of specific training on extra topics within Adobe Camera Raw and how it uh, relates with other programs. It's very difficult to describe one Adobe app as a singularity because they, they so work together. It's really hard to separate them, isn't it? And so there's Adobe Bridge and there's Adobe Lightroom and there's Adobe Photoshop, just to name three of our photographic-centered uh, soft, software applications. It's very hard to talk about any one of those. I'm struggling with that here in Adobe Camera Raw, but I'll help make sense of how it fits into the mix of all the others. You may have heard of RAW. If you're a photographer, you have a choice of shooting in JPEG or shooting in RAW, RAW format. And by the way, if you are a photographer and you'd like to really up your game, I hope you already understand you should be shooting in RAW format. But RAW format is not Adobe Camera Raw. RAW format is a file type like TIFF or JPEG or HEEK or PSD, a Photoshop document, for example. Camera Raw, Adobe Camera Raw, is not a file type. No, no, it's a software. Here, look. Check it out. I'm in my Adobe Creative Cloud panel. Now, it shows all the photo software and illustration software and all, all the rest that I've subscribed to and I pay a hefty monthly fee for that, right? Now, you may not have all of these choices. If you've just done the $10 a month, for example, Photoshop Lightroom combo, trust me, you get Photoshop and Lightroom, but you always also get Bridge. I want you to know that when you go to purchase, you're going to see Lightroom and Photoshop, but I want you to know that when you purchase that subscription of $9.99, whatever it turns out to be this week, this month, you'll always also be able to download at no extra charge Adobe Bridge. Hmm. Curious. Well, anyway, here I am looking at Photoshop and Bridge and Lightroom Classic, but if I keep going down that line, you will see what I see. Camera Raw. Now it's officially made by Adobe, so it's often referred to as Adobe Camera Raw. Adobe Camera Raw, and if you're going to Google this on the internet, search it out, learn all about it, you may need to know the acronym ACR, Adobe Camera Raw. That's what it stands for, and often articles only refer to it as ACR, Adobe Camera Raw. Now notice there's something else very curious about this piece of software, Camera Raw. It doesn't have an open button. All the rest of them seem to do. I'm just playing Sesame Street here. Which one is not like the others? I'm looking and, and it appears that Camera Roll doesn't have an open. That's worth knowing. Let's go ahead and close. Because Adobe Camera Raw is software, not a file type like raw file types. It's a software, Adobe Camera Raw, that you can't open. Go figure. Well then how do you use it? Worth knowing. Grab your pencil. Adobe Camera Raw is a plugin. It's a plugin. It's software that plugs into, is used inside of three apps. Adobe Bridge, Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Photoshop. Let, 
let this be known. Adobe Camera Raw, the course you're taking, is a plugin that works identically in Bridge, Lightroom, and Photoshop. Hmm. In fact, it's the engine under the hood anytime you're working with a raw file type. Camera Raw kicks in and does the, the work for you. If you're in Photoshop and you're working on a raw file, trust me, Photoshop bails and says, oh my gosh, get me out of here. And it pushes the image over towards Adobe Camera Raw. You'll open and you'll see a screen that you may or may not recognize as Adobe Camera Raw, but that's what Photoshop does if you try to open a raw file into Photoshop. Now, here I am in Bridge. And in Bridge, I, I can see my images and I could go long way, file menu, open in camera raw. Notice the keyboard shortcut is command R on the Mac, control R on the PC. So I don't have to come to the menu if I don't want. I can just do command or control R. And let's go look inside bridge at Adobe camera raw inside bridge. Now, when you look at this screen, you're going to have already seen it is my guess. You've already seen this screen. You probably saw it in Photoshop. It's identical. It looks just like this in Bridge or Photoshop if you open a RAW file. Just like this. Now let me explain what I mean when I say just like this. Well, if you, there's a big area here you can see with my image in it. We're gonna take a tour and talk about the areas of this panel, but look quickly at the top Right, there are some colored mountain ranges. It's called a histogram, we'll come back to that. An edit, something called a profile. I see Nikon 300, Rix, R-I-X. I guess that has something to do with my Nikon. Uh, basic, check it out, basic. It has a down arrow, it's open. The basic panel can be opened or closed. And basic is what you'll see as soon as you open an image. It takes you straight to the basic panel. You'll become really familiar with that panel. But notice some of these, I'm just gonna say for quick examples, white balance, temp, tint, exposure, and so on down that list. On it goes. Now, if you could memorize some numbers. I'm going to memorize these three shadows, whites, and blacks just for an experiment. Plus 57, minus 25, plus 22. 57, minus 25, plus 22. Now let's head over to Lightroom. I thought we were going to head over to Lightroom. Oh, I, I did just head over to Lightroom. I'm in Lightroom and I've got this same image open in Lightroom and, and it looks a little different. Look at the mountain range. In Bridge, the mountain range was just an outline and in Lightroom, they filled in the mountains with solids. Hmm. Uh, I'm seeing here, oh, Profile, look, Profile. Nikon D300 Rix. Hmm. Over in Bridge, I saw white balance, but here I see WB. It's the same thing. Then I saw temp and tint and exposure and contrast and so on. Do you remember the three values that we memorized? Shadows, whites, and blacks. Plus 57, minus 25, plus 22. Those numbers don't mean anything to us yet, but I'm letting you know that it's identical. Adobe Camera Raw is what you are editing in when you are in Lightroom. But you don't need Lightroom to edit in Adobe Camera Raw. Well, you don't, you have a possibility at least of Lightroom, but you could also use Bridge. You could also use Photoshop. It doesn't matter. Big mind blow. It's the same. So when your friends start telling you how Lightroom 
is so much better than Bridge or Bridge is so much better than Photoshop or Photoshop is better than Lightroom when it comes to editing raw files. It's all bunk because it's identical. It's the same. It's the same engine. Now what's not identical is the overlay, the tissue paper that overlays the engine. You see here in Lightroom, they use a bigger icon for an eyedropper. It's a bigger icon and, and they filled in the mountain range with, with solid shades. And this is a beautiful kind of a light gray panel backdrop here on a darker gray field. And here I'm back in Bridge, Adobe Camera Raw via Bridge. And I don't see that same filling. I don't see the big icon for white balance. I don't see a light gray on a dark gray field. It's identical software. Part one, Adobe Camera Raw is a plugin. It is software that edits raw file types. It's a plugin that plugs into Photoshop, Lightroom, and Bridge. It's an engine under the hood of those three apps and it's identical in its functionality. Even though you may view a slightly different tissue paper overlay. Part one. Part two. Why do I care? If it's something I could use in Bridge or Lightroom or Photoshop, why do I care? Why would I be in one over another? Why? Here's a file. It's a DNG. We'll talk more about DNG, but DNG is a raw file type. And now I'm going to open that raw file in Photoshop. And watch what happens. Look familiar? Photoshop kicks it right over to Adobe Camera Raw. When you open a photo of a raw file type in Photoshop, trust me, it takes you to Adobe Camera Raw. Let's cancel. I could quit Photoshop if I wanted. I'm going to go ahead and quit Lightroom. I just wanted you to see the differences in view, but functionality is the same. Why pick one over another? Here's the best thing I can tell you. And it's worth knowing. Grab your pencil. Photoshop has two problems. You love Photoshop. I love Photoshop too. But it's usually not the best image editor. It's usually not the best image editor to begin with to start editing with. It's not bad for five important reasons on the back end, which we talk about in my Photoshop course, but in the front end, you're better off not using it. But that's not the way you've been working, is it? Everyone goes to Photoshop first. Photoshop is like a jungle. When, when my son was born, newborn baby, it was a scary thing. I wanted to be a good parent. I had to learn how to be a good parent. I didn't know everything yet. But imagine if they put that newborn baby in my arm and I ripped off his diaper, I ripped off the blanket. I myself also stripped down to a loincloth and off we ran to the Amazon jungle. Me and my naked baby. What kind of a father would I be? There are all kinds of pitfalls inside that jungle. Things that are trying to eat my baby. Oh, no, man. Huh. Boa constrictor. Hey, honey, we need a new one. That wouldn't go over very well. But if I got a new one and I go right back into the same jungle, shame on me. I ought to know better. I'm aware of the boa constrictor, but oh, I didn't know about the jaguar. Hey, honey. You see how it goes. Over, over, and over again, there are other things I have to be trained on in order to get my baby. Why am I talking about a baby? Because your photos, your images are your baby. 
and you want to save the baby. Keep your baby out of the jungle until you get jungle training. Until you know how to get your baby through the jungle of Photoshop. Photoshop's a jungle. Lots of pitfalls. That's a problem with Photoshop. Lots of ways to harm the baby. Well, can you put it in a more scientific term, Rick? Yes, Photoshop is a destructive image editor. It's a destructive image editor. You cannot open a file in Photoshop and begin to edit it without losing data. Data doesn't sound very imagey. Data values, colors, tones, hues, even pixels. All of these are things that you begin to lose when you edit in Photoshop. Now, I didn't make this up. Adobe confessed to this sin in the manual, which is online as a PDF. It's a destructive image editor. And so that's why for nearly the entire life of Photoshop, it has always come bundled with Bridge and Adobe Camera Raw. Because, next big point, Lightroom and Bridge are non-destructive image editors. Whoa, I wish I had learned that way back. Bridge and Lightroom are non-destructive Photoshop is destructive. So I don't want to take my baby, my image, into the jungle of Photoshop immediately. I didn't know it was a destructive image editor. Now you do. Be a good parent. You have two choices remaining. You could edit your baby, your raw file, Mr. and Mrs. Photographer. You could edit your raw file in Lightroom or Bridge. Is it the same software? Yes, under the hood. Adobe Camera Raw. Well, then why would it matter? It's because their front ends act very differently. They have very different strategies. Photoshop is destructive and, thank goodness, you may not think this is a benefit, I can only edit one image at a time in Photoshop. But Bridge and Lightroom can edit multiple files at the same time. Imagine if I shot a wedding and I, um, I'm in the sanctuary and I got, I don't know, 60 shots of the bride and groom in the sanctuary, the same lighting set up and same lens, well, who knows what. I could edit all 60 at the same time in either Lightroom or Bridge. Batch editing is a benefit of these two. They both use Adobe Camera Raw. What's different? Lightroom utilizes something called a catalog. A catalog. Now, you know this if you're a Lightroom user. In fact, you probably already uh, have developed a, a, a pain in your stomach regarding the catalog because if you've been a Lightroom user for very long, you know this thing is prone to error and corruption. It often gets lost. It often says you need to rebuild the catalog. It says, I can't find the catalog. I can't find your image in the catalog. A catalog is sort of a placeholder for all the edits you've done to the real files. The real files have not been edited. You've edited what are called proxy, P-R-O-X-Y, proxy images in Lightroom, and the originals have been untouched. Now, that's interesting. If you're a Lightroom user and you've edited a photo, and then you send it to a magazine publisher because they, they're thinking about buying your photo. If you send them the photo, you forgot maybe to send the edits to the photo. The photo itself does not maintain or, or hold the edits you made. That's weird. That's hard for me to wrap my brain around. It doesn't seem like the way it ought to be. Hmm. But Bridge is different. Bridge has no catalog. There's no catalog with Bridge. There's nothing to get corrupted. 
to lose, to lose track of the image. And I never have to import an image into the catalog. That's what you do every time you need to work on a file in Lightroom. You need to at least import them once before you can get any work done. Not so with Bridge. Bridge edits images directly. When you edit an image out on your computer screen somewhere, out on your desktop somewhere, heck, I don't know, let me go look. I'm gonna go look in my um, pictures folder. I'm not in Lightroom. Uh, now there's a Lightroom folder, which is where my catalogs get stored. Those aren't my real files. But here's a folder uh, full of photos. They're, that's my real file, right? That's my real file. And if I want to open it in Bridge, I could drag and drop it. And I'm in. Notice how fast that was. There was no import. And if I edit that file, Command or Control R, if I edit that file, I'm editing the actual file. Done. Notice, by the way, it says done and not save. In Photoshop, there's a save button. Why? It's a contract. You are saving the destruction that you've wrought on your image. They therefore make you save it, save it. And bridge, it's direct. If I were to go look at that real outside of Bridge, now you can't do this in Lightroom. In Lightroom, that file is only available to you in Lightroom. But here I am on my desktop again. It's the same file. Bridge doesn't import anything. Bridge is just a screen that lets you see what's already on your hard drive desktop. If I open that image in Photoshop, let's do it. Take that file and open it in Photoshop. It's the real deal. Oh wait, Photoshop says, I see a raw file, Rick. I'm gonna send it over to Adobe Camera Raw. There it is. There it is. Cancel. I can edit in Lightroom or Bridge non-destructively. You can undo any change in Adobe Camera Raw. You can undo any change you've ever made in the history of that file, ever. There's only one file to keep track of. Not like Photoshop where you save a copy and then you save another copy with new changes and you save another copy with more changes. You never have to do that. What is that doing to your hard drive? Filling up. In Lightroom or Bridge, you can save one image, edit it multiple ways, undo those edits even 20 plus years later. If you chose to do that, it's non-destructive. The difference is Lightroom has a catalog, Bridge does not. Bridge edits directly. Does this make sense? I'm giving you an overview here in week one, why we care about Adobe Camera Raw. Are you ready for a underline? This is a big underline. Why do we care? Adobe Camera Raw edits raw file types without destroying any data. It's completely, therefore, undoable or changeable in any way for the life, forward or backward, of that file. It's incredible. And I can batch process if I use Lightroom or Bridge. And if I use Bridge, I don't need to worry about a catalog. Now, some of you already know this because you've already taken my ultimate guide to Adobe Bridge course. But I have to say it for my newbies. There are three courses that I teach. It's so hard to talk about one without the other two. Honestly, it is. And some of you started with me in the real Photoshop course. Some of you began your lives with me in the ultimate guide to Adobe Bridge. But all of you are now in this course, editing in Adobe Camera Raw. I show you these three to make a point. If it was me 
I would take them in this order. One, two, three. No, you don't have to take them in this order. Trust me, it's okay. It still works. But if you had a friend and you said, you know, you really ought to take it in this order, it all makes more sense. You see how I'm spending a lot of time talking about bridge on my way into talking about Adobe Camera Raw. And then ultimately, what are those five big reasons to take my baby into the jungle of Photoshop? That's the order that I would do two things. The order that I would teach, but this also represents the order that my workflow follows. I take my photos, I bring them into Bridge, then I edit them in Adobe Camera Raw before they ever might make it to the light of the jungle of Photoshop. This represents the proper workflow. Notice it's not Photoshop first. And that's what most of you have been doing. Okay? It's probably a good place to pause right there and think about what you've learned. But before I cut you loose in lesson one and turn you over to this week's five bonus videos, I would like to show you something about the display, the area on the screen. I'm in Bridge. I've tapped one image. You could do this in Lightroom by hitting the Develop module. You could open this in Photoshop by just opening from Photoshop any raw file. You'd see the same thing. You saw that a moment ago. But here I am on my raw image via Bridge, Command or Control R. And let's just do a quick overview of what Adobe Camera Raw, the panels, look like. Okay, I'm going to show you what it looks like. You've seen this already, we're familiar with this already, but now let me point your attention to some specific areas of concern. At the top of the screen is my file name. Now, here's the first keyboard shortcut I'm going to teach you. It's the letter, one finger is all I need the letter F, plain old F. F changes my frame, my working frame size, my frame size. F could stand for frame size. F could also stand for, if I hit it again, full screen view. F, F. My frame size changed, I'm at full size. The F could also, if you want to pretend, means fill my screen, fill it, F, F, F. It's F, F, it's a toggle. Okay, now, you don't need the letter F to do that. There's a keyboard clicker icon right over here. That little icon is the equivalent of what I just did with the letter F, and you see F in parentheses, F, F, I'm the keyboard shortcut. So you could do that without memorizing F. You could also drag the bottom right hand corner to change the frame size. But the short way is F. Something else changed aside from my frame size. Look at the top of the screen. There's my file name at the very top. But if I hit F, now what's at the very top of that frame is my camera raw version number. Now, don't pay attention to the specific value there because it changes all the time. Adobe upgrade this almost weekly. Don't worry about it. Not quite weekly, but nearly. But if you wanted to see what your camera raw version was, you could open Adobe Camera Raw and hit F. And there she blows, you can see it. If I'm in full screen mode, it hides that information. Just want you to know, across the top of the screen, file name, and depending on if you're full screen or not, camera rolls version number. Good. This area, we've talked about it quickly, those mountain ranges. This area is known as 
the histogram. The histogram. It's at the top of the Adobe Camera Raw panel. Whether it's Lightroom, Photoshop, or Bridge, here's what it looks like. The histogram appears at the top. And right below that histogram, I'm seeing, depending where I move my cursor, I'm seeing my camera data, ISO 200. Uh, I used an 11 to 16 millimeter lens, but I shot it at 11 millimeters. It was f8 for my aperture setting at 1 500th of a second for my shutter speed. So all that shows up there. At the top is always the histogram. Below that it's letting me know I'm editing automatically, a quick conversion to black and white, or out of black and white if I click it again. Color on or off is what that B&W button means there. Okay. Auto, I go, I don't know, you figure it out. And I click it, and the, com the computer does some artificial intelligence and says, well, I suggest this, and I say, I suggest no, and I can hit auto again. I like the darker scene. It's your call. That's auto. I'm going to keep reading. I've applied a specialty color calibration to any photo I took with my Nikon D300 way back in the day. And that color profile is hanging on. That color calibration is hanging on to this image to try to make sure that the color I asked for back then is the color I still get no matter where I take it in its future, whether to Photoshop or to a printer, some sort of printing device. More on that later too. Now here I am in my panels. So let's create in our notes the word panels. This is the key for most of Adobe Camera Raw editing. The panels. Now my panels, basic, curve, detail, I could keep reading. All of those are panel headings. Those are panels. And the first panel is basic. That's what you'll be delivered to when you first open an image. We described that. My basic panel. Now, the panel may be open. I'm going to twist this little white arrowhead. I'm going to click it. It points down, letting me see what's under the basic panel. If I click it again, it opens. It closes right back up. It collapses. That's called collapsing the panel. Expanding the, the panel. Collapse, expand the basic panel, and I can see all of the sliders. These are the sliders. That's what they call them. Sliders that will affect particular ranges of things like overall brightness or just the shadows. Notice that just my shadows are changing. That is so cool. A lot easier to do that here than in Photoshop. Wow and so on down the line. That's a basic panel. What I'm saying is introduce yourself to all these things that normally would scare you to death. They're not scary. We're going to unpack each one. And in this course lasting a month, once every Friday, you get another of four lessons. And you'll also get in those weeks bonus videos on specific topics. I've got one coming up, for example, on the sliders, pure and simple. So watch the main lesson, watch the bonus videos, and then I'm going to make you a promise. Okay? Uh, actually, a confession and a promise. The confession is this. I have a day job. I have a day job. I, I work. I have a real full-time gig. My real full-time gig is I am a consultant for printers and publishers and photographers. And my website, my company name is Artistech. Artistech. See how I misspell artistic? I'm an artist. I'm a tech. It's a bit of both. So you could check me out and see all the wonderful things my mother has to say for me in my bio at artistech.com. Check it out. If you want to follow me on Instagram, and I wish you would. I love following students 
and students following me as we check each other out and we encourage each other in our photographic stride or walk, okay? Easy peasy. Instagram.com Rick Burris. Rick Burris. How do I come up with these clever Instagram names? <laughs> okay? Check it out. Now, by the way, if you can spell my name, I'm going to copy it. If you can spell my name and add at the end of it an at gmail.com, you've got my email address. Rick Burris at gmail.com. Rick Burris at gmail.com. That's my email address. Why am I telling you that? Because if you, here's the confession <laughs> and the apology and the promise. The confession slash apology is I have a real job. I'm very active in that job consulting customers. So I may not get to all your emails throughout the week. It's okay. You've got a week to work on the lesson. Watch the bonus videos. And then here's the promise. But, and, every Thursday, I've already carved it out of my schedule. Thursday is now yours day. And every Thursday, I respond to every email with every single question you ask me from every one of you by recording another video with demos, your images, some solutions from me, solutions from you. We're going to do that every Thursday, and I'll forward you. I'll announce via the BPSOP website. I'll announce that that video on that Thursday, on that yours day, is now available. You'll receive it in the evenings, most probably, on Thursdays. And I would watch that video before you watch Friday's next lesson because it will answer your and your colleagues, your peers, other questions from the previous week. I don't want to bite off too much. I think this is plenty for week one. I so appreciate you hanging out with me. I pray that you give me some sweet attention and thank you very much for allowing me to interact with you, your creative mind, through your time, your talents, and I appreciate your trust. Watch the bonus videos this week. Send me your emails. I'll get back to you on yours day, and then we'll watch the next lesson two on Friday. Enjoy. Welcome.